power meters and heart rate straps. Two devices that you can use to gauge your performance, understand your pacing and your training, and ultimately use them to get fitter and faster on the bike. But what are the differences between the two, the advantages, disadvantages of both? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain quickly and efficiently. So first up, let's start with the basics. Training with power and heart rate data allows you to actually look at those metrics in real time as you ride. It also allows you to analyze the data post-ride, see how you perform, and also look to how you can structure your future training. It also means you can train accurately in specific zones. However, there are some big differences between the two. First up, starting with cost. Power meters, it must be said, are quite expensive. You want to pick one up, you're looking at 500 to 1200 US dollars, pounds, euros to get one on your bike. Heart rate straps, pretty cheap by comparison. You can get a relatively good one for around 20 to 30 pounds of US dollars. If you want one with a few more functions built into it, you're looking at 50 to 60 US dollars, euros or sterling. You can also get heart rate data functionality in a smartwatch, which you may be wearing. Not quite as accurate as the chest strap, which I've got on right here. Chest strap uses electrode uh, sensors to pick up your heart rate data. Watch usually uses an optical sensor to pick up all that heart rate data. Power meters come in various different forms. I've got pedal-based ones fitted to my bike right now, but you can get them fitted to the spider or the crank, and you can also get ones even fitted to the rear hub of your bike. Plus, if you've got a smart trainer at home, that's probably got a power meter inbuilt. We use Wahoo Kicker here at GCN. You may have seen that one in plenty of our GCN training videos. Can be useful to get your power data when you're riding back home, wherever that may be, in your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen. Um, now, power meters, they do have differences in terms of accuracy. So, the single based one, if you just measure your power on one side, that is a little less accurate than a double based power meter because the single based one's only measuring the power using one leg and it's doubling it to find your overall power. Double based ones measure both legs. If you can't afford a power meter, then don't worry. A heart rate monitor can still be a really useful tool. Obviously, the cost being cheaper is an advantage, but it also gives a good indication of your physiological response to certain efforts. And it can be really useful for pacing longer efforts, up long climbs, or in a TT, for example. Although, it is important to understand the limitations of a heart rate monitor, which we'll explain now. Firstly, heart rate highly variable. For example, if you're fresh, well rested, perhaps you're riding on a hot day like I am today, then you're gonna see a much higher peak heart rate than if it was cold and you were tired. Other variables to consider, are you well hydrated? Did you have a coffee? Maybe you had alcohol the night before? When did you last eat? These are all things that can affect your heart rate data. Plus, if you're riding at a higher altitude, you're always gonna see a much higher heart rate than if you're at a lower altitude, which does make it quite hard to compare one performance to the next if you're just looking at heart rate data. Power, on the other hand, stays constant. The power you do is the power you do. Another issue with heart rate is heart rate drift. So you may do some testing to determine your FTP, which will in turn allow you to find out what training zones you should be riding in at different intensities. If you don't know how to do this, check out some of the videos on our channel, which tells you in more detail how to do just that. But let's put that into practice with an example. Say I'm aiming to ride in zone two, which for me is around 280 watts. At the start of a ride, my heart rate would be around 120 beats per minute. But at the end of a six hour ride, I'll start to get more fatigued. And at the same power, my heart rate will drift up to around 150 beats per minute, which is why it can be hard when you're just using your heart rate data to know exactly which zone you should be riding in, which is the advantage of power. Power is absolute. The power you produce the power you produce. Other limitations for looking at your heart rate data when you're riding or doing efforts is fatigue. So if you do back-to-back -back riding, day on, day on, day on, 
start to build up some fatigue, you get tired, and that shows in your heart rate data. So if I did a, an effort fresh on a climb, and I'm sitting around 380, 400 watts, my heart rate would be around 170 beats per minute. However, if I kept riding five days, three days later, do the same power output, my heart rate will be lower. So it will sit around 155, 160. Now that is in part attributed to having a higher blood plasma volume and also because I'm tired. And if I look at some of the efforts I did in Grand Tours, third week for example, 21 days of riding in a row, in the third week my heart rate would be so low I could barely get it over 150 beats per minute no matter what. So fatigue does play a big role. As you may notice I'm feeling it now. What I'd recommend is focusing on your sheer power because really it's what pros are increasingly doing too these days. Yes, there is a place for being lightweight, but mainly this is aimed at riders who are looking to tackle 5,000 meters elevation plus in the mountains of the Grand Tours. And what, that's 20 or 30 riders tops, plus they have a whole team of professionals around them looking to help them achieve this goal. But. Arguably, heart rate data is much more useful when combined with power data. That way you can really see how your body is responding to fatigue, how your power data changes, how your heart rate data changes at certain efforts, at certain power intensities. So you get a good idea of things like how you're able to withstand repeated efforts out on the bike and also look at if you're getting any fitter on the bike because if you're able to sustain a higher power output for the same heart rate, you're getting fitter. But it must be said that you need to get used to riding your bike without looking at the data too because you need to be able to sustain and pace these longer efforts without solely relying on looking down at the numbers. It is a good investment of power meter if you're looking to take your training to the next level, perhaps add in some structure, but it must be said if you're just looking to get out on the bike, enjoy being outside, have some fun, it really isn't essential. The final big issue with heart rate data is lag. So if you do a short, sharp, fast effort, a sprint, for example, it's gonna take a while for your heart rate data to catch up. Pacing a short, sharp effort, say one or two minutes, purely with heart rate data is really difficult because your power will spike straight away. It's instant. You'll be able to see those numbers rise, whereas your heart rate, it will take a bit of a while to get to where it needs to be. So. I'll show you with a little example with this sprint. Right, power is straight up 600, 700 watts, but my heart rate data hasn't really changed. It's still as if I'm doing a recovery ride. Now it is starting to rise though, but that is what makes it so difficult to pace a shorter effort purely with your heart rate data. If you are doing a threshold effort though, a longer 20, 30 minute, you see my heart rate really rising now, but if you are doing a longer 20, 30 minute effort it is a little easier to use your heart rate data because you've got more time for it to catch up and be accurately represented. But just bear in mind that it will take one or two minutes to get where it accurately should be. Woo! With power, the numbers don't lie. Power meters quantitatively measure the force your legs are able to produce to turn the pedals. And one of the greatest advantages of power compared to heart rate is that it's so accurate. It accurately displays the effort or lack of that you're doing. Heart rate data can be variable and can throw you out of a training zone so you're not really getting the benefits that you're aiming for when you're riding your bike. If you're using power, you know exactly what you're doing at the exact moment. Hopefully this video will be able to tell you if you benefit from using a heart rate strap or a power meter out on the bike, or neither, don't need to use one. And if you did find this video useful, please give it a big thumbs up and let us know in the comments if you use a power meter or a heart rate strap and if you've noticed any benefit or found it useful in your training. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.